Okay, so I want to just go over roof styles here. Um, one of the first things you're going to do is the uh, roof types worksheet. Uh, it's a two-page Word doc. Uh, so for each of the different types of roofs that are listed on there, so gable, hip, shed, and there's mansard, a couple other types um, on the following page. Find a nice picture of that roof type. Do a little research on that. Don't just pull the first one that you find on. Um, find on the internet might not be the right type, so look at a couple different of them, and then just write you know a sentence or two description about that roof type. Um, hopefully you'll find like certain architectural styles are going to use different roof types so you can use that in your design um, as you go forward uh, you're going to upload this when it's complete make sure you save it um, before you upload it so it gets all the information in there but again use uh, your description in your own words don't just copy that straight from uh, wikipedia or anything like that all right uh, one of the choices you're going to have to make is your roof material so traditional asphalt shingles like you see down here in the bottom left uh, that's what most of you probably have on your house depending on the style of home uh, you're doing um, you might decide to go with like a standing metal seam roof like you see here uh, you might go cedar shake uh, this one on the bottom right corner this is actually a rubber composite uh, that's made to look like slate a lot of people are using on high-end homes now and then you also have um, the spanish tile roof now, uh, you might also look, I know, Jaden, you were looking at putting a, um, like a deck on top of your garage, something like that. That's going to be like a flat rubber roof, and then you can see there are floor joists on top of those. Typically, these are tapered, so that the deck is, um, deck is actually flat, but the roof underneath allows that water to shed to the end. Um, so you can see how those rafters has been run right on top of there. So there's a continuous rubber roof underneath and this is built up on top. So if that's something you're looking at, um, doing some kind of, um, section like this, you're probably going to be setting this roof up as a floor type, um, later on. So, uh, we'll add all these different layers. So the actual floor underneath, then this rafter, and then that finish, uh, up on top. So think about your design, think about, uh, the, um, type of house you're going to do and what might work for you. You could use a combination of roofs uh, if you wanted to use, you know, like some um, standing metal seam and a little bit of asphalt. I've seen that. I would probably just stick with one to make it easy. The other thing you'll have to uh, start to think about is roof pitch. Uh, so when we look at roof pitches, we can have, you know, typically we don't see too much over 12-12 around here. Um, but uh, as we get into colder climates, you can see this house on the right here. Um, if you're going to have a large snow load, you may have a very steep roof, almost like an A-frame house. Um, in warmer climates, typically you're going to see that lower um, uh, lower pitched uh, roof and you're also going to see more overhangs to block some of those sun angles unlike up in New England you're not going to see as many overhangs because you don't get the great sun angles so they want to get all that sun they can um, so this is something to think about once we get into design it's something you have to decide right now we want to look at uh, roof structure so this is a traditional how truss um, you can choose rafter or truss when you make your roof uh, later on again not a decision you need to make now um, uh, if you're using the truss, uh, it's a lighter uh, material, so you have a, less of a thickness in the roof itself. Um, they're faster to put up. Not something you're worried about in this product or in this project, but you know these are like a one-day crane comes in, you put all the trusses up, and you're ready to go. Uh, versus rafter, that could be a multi-day um, construction. So, just something to think about. You can have an attic space in um, in a truss setup. So this is an attic truss here. This note about this piggyback thing, the very peak of the roof, basically they can't fit that to go down the road. So that has to uh, come separately uh, just for transportation. Uh, but that's something you can do. Uh, with trusses, there's less modification you can do later on uh, than traditional framing because you can't cut into any of the truss members without really sacrificing the whole structure of the truss. Um, so this is would be traditional rafter. Um, and again, it doesn't matter which one you want to go with here. But the big thing on traditional rafter is you're going to have a thicker uh, rafter than you would in the, the truss, the way the truss is set up. So uh, you do have typically a gable end. You might end up with a hip roof where they're all sloped back. Uh, each rafter has this little bird's mouth on it. That's where it actually sits on the top of the uh, double top plate on the wall and then there's a ridge plate that goes through there so that's an option in Revit uh, you can set up whether you're doing uh, truss or rafter and that's really going to depend on where it places the height uh, of that roof so something to look at a little bit later on roof overhang is something you're going to want to consider as well uh, and this will have a lot to do with style so I know some of you have those modern houses you want those larger overhangs so start to think about that kind of stuff versus something you might see more up in New England with a very small overhang on there um, that kind of Cape Cod look 
looking at the benefits of that larger roof overhang to a degree. Um, with that larger roof overhang, the summer sun angle is higher, so you're blocking uh, some of that summer sun from coming in your home. So you don't have that solar gain during the summer, uh, but during the winter months when the sun angle is lower, uh, it's able to get through there, uh, depending on where your windows and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, it gives you that solar gain so you can start to heat your house solarly a little bit in the winter. So it's a nice idea to have that overhang, but that's going to be a trade-off between the architectural style and then um, what you actually want to do uh, as far as solar gain. So something to think about later on, typically 12 to 18 inches for most of your homes, unless you're going something ultra modern here, uh, you might have some much larger overhangs. All right, so this is a traditional roof section. Um, this is for, you know, there's no attic space above here. This is a two by six, so you don't really want to be walking on this. Uh, you might have some storage up there. There's a collar tie up top that uh, ties both halves of the roof together because when that load comes down, they want to tend to spread to the outside. So that's going to resist that spreading towards the top. Same as the ceiling joist is going to do that down here uh, where it attaches to the uh, top of the wall. So uh, this is only using a 2x6 rafter. It's got 3 quarter inch uh, sheathing on it and um, asphalt shingles. Depending on the roof type you pick, this is going to be different. If you're using Spanish tile, you're not going to have the sheathing. You're going to have purlins. Um, and it's going to have to be a pretty heavy rafter because that product is very heavy uh, that's in there. Uh, looking at... Uh, a little bit about how thick uh, your rafter is going to be. Uh, if we take a look at this uh, span here, span table, this is for a 2 by 10 uh, space 16 inches on center. So if you had to, you could space them closer together to get a larger span. And then looking over at uh, your rafters here, so this is a plain rafter, not one that has drywall below, um, and, and all that kind of adds weight to it. There is a note here about the slope. So if we think about a low sloped roof, there is more pressure um, that's going to be transferred directly to the rafter. Higher sloped roofs, a lot of that is going, to, all that load is going to be transferred straight down to the wall because of that higher slope. So they can actually span a little bit further. Uh, but with a two by ten, it's sixteen inch. Even if you're going low pitched, you can span twenty feet. All right, and that's to that's to the ridge line. So you can probably do your house in this unless you're doing something really enormous. Um, you may have to go with a 2x12, but a 2x10 looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to ask you to do a sketch uh, depending on your roof material. So I drew a 2x10 in here. This is inside my core boundary. So the yellow highlight lines, whatever color marker you have, highlight your core boundary. And when we set this up in Revit, uh, a 2x10 is actually only 9.5 inches thick. Um, outside of that, typically um, minimum thickness you can use is 5 eighths of an inch OSB. Uh, or plywood sheathing that gets nailed directly to the rafter. On top of that, you have roof felt. This is for traditional uh, asphalt shingle. If you're going with uh, Spanish tile, if you're going with cedar shake, you need to look at a roof section that's specific for that. Those types do not have the sheathing on it. They have like uh, horizontal boards that go across. They're called purlins. Um, but on top of the um, plywood or sheathing, you have a roof felt. This is uh, set up as a it's like a 32nd of an inch thick, but this is set up as a membrane layer in Revit, and it's going to be set to a thickness of zero. And it's important that it's set to membrane. Uh, it won't allow structures to be a thickness of zero. And then your asphalt shingle is approximately a quarter inch thick. Now, on the inside, if this is just an unfinished attic space, uh, your roof system would stop here. If you're thinking of cathedral ceilings in a certain room, you may add the drywall on the inside of that. And again, that would be outside your core boundary. Otherwise, it's going to start pushing that on the outside of the home. Um, once we get into Revit, then you're going to set that up. Now, this one's only a, a two by eight set at seven and a half. This has the five eighths, um, plywood. It has the asphalt shingle. It does not have the felt paper that's inside of there. Uh, so again, uh, for the, for this week, I'll ask that you do the, well, this, this will be due on Wednesday. Uh, I'm hoping to start Revit, do the roof, uh, type sheet with your six photos, upload that. And then all I need is a photograph. Uh, you don't have to put that in a PowerPoint or anything. You can just upload a photograph, or if you want to stick it in PowerPoint with a, a label on it, you can. But you can just handwrite everything and upload that. So if you've got questions, uh, office hours again are between 8 and 11. Uh, shoot me an email, um, and we'll hope to get started on Revit on Wednesday next week.